In our application, we are going to deal with four components, registration, login, regular events, and special events. Let's generate them using Angular CLI and configure the routing module for the individual components. So add a new terminal, navigate inside the ng app folder, cd ng app, and run the command ng g for generate, c for component, followed by the name of the component. In our case, the first component is the register component. What the command does is it creates a new folder called register and within the register folder creates an HTML file, a TypeScript file for testing, the regular component TypeScript file and a CSS file. It also updates the app module with an import to this register component. So if I navigate inside ng app within the source folder, within the app folder, we should have the register folder with the four different files. So we have generated the register component. Similarly, let's generate the other components. Next is login. So ng, g for generate, c for component, and then login is the name of the component. Next, let's generate a component for events. ng, g for generate, c for component, and then the name of the component is events. And finally, a component for the special events. So ng, g for generate, c for component, and then the name of the component. This is going to be special events, special hyphen events. All right, now that we have the four components created, let's set up the routes. So in the source folder, open the file app.routing.module.ts. This is a routing module where we configure the different routes for our application. So I'm gonna hide this. So you can see that we have a constant named routes initialized to an empty array. Now the routes are nothing but an array of objects. So let's add them one by one. The first route, let's add it for the regular events. So remember, each route is an object. The first property we specify here is the path. Now the path is going to be events and the component is going to be the events component. The second route we define is for the special events. So again, a pair of curly braces. The path is going to be special. And then the component to be rendered is the special events component. Next, the login route. A pair of curly braces. Path is going to be login. And then the component is going to be login component. And then of course, the register route. Pair of curly braces, path is going to be register, and then the component is going to be register component. Now, each time I added the component, also notice that it was automatically imported. So make sure to add the import statement at the top of the file. Now, finally, we are going to add one more route. Now, this route is going to be the default route. So the path is going to be an empty string. And then we are going to redirect this path to the events path. And then we of course have to specify the path match property to be full for proper navigation. So anytime a user navigates to just localhost colon 4200, they're going to be redirected to the events route and the events component is going to be rendered. All right, now that we have the routes in place, let's build the UI to navigate to them. And for UI, I will be making use of Bootstrap 4. You can use any CSS framework you're comfortable with, but I really like Bootstrap 4, and it's really simple to build layouts using Bootstrap. So to add Bootstrap, go to getbootstrap.com, Go to getting started section. In the introduction section, we have the quick start. So copy paste the CSS. So CSS link, go back to your explorer 
in the index.html file. And just before the closing head tag, paste the link. So we have a reference to the CSS. Next, let's add a reference to the script. So go back to uh, get bootstrap and in the JS section, you can see that we have three script tags. So copy this, go back to index.html, just before the closing body tag, paste them. And we are good to go. We can start using bootstrap in our application. So to change the HTML, go to app.component.html. Now, I don't really want to have you guys watch me code some HTML and CSS. So I'm going to paste the HTML and explain what each bit of the markup is. So select all the HTML and replace it with the HTML required for our application. All right, to begin with, we have a navigation bar with a dark theme. We have a brand text which says Event Hub. And we have a toggle button for responsiveness. And coming to the links in the navigation bar, we have one for each route. On the left hand side of the navigation bar, you will see a link to regular events and special events. On the right hand side, a link to login and register. Now, how do we specify navigation? With the routing directives. Router link dictates what route the application will navigate to and the router link active directive specifies the class that has to be applied when the particular route is active. So you can see the four different routes configured and an active class that gets applied if the route is active. Events will navigate to slash events. Members will navigate to slash special. Login will navigate to the login route and register will navigate to the register route. And finally, at the bottom, we have a router outlet tag that is going to render the particular component in a container class. All right, let's save this and take a look at the browser to see how it looks. So I'm going to go back to ng app and you can see that the brand event hub, a link to regular events, a link to special events, a link to login and register. If I click on them, we are navigated to the corresponding routes and the active class is applied to that particular link. You can see that register has a white font or in other words, an active class. Now it's login, now it's members, now it's events. And if I navigate to just localhost colon 4200, we are redirected to slash events, which is our default route. All right, now that the navigation is done, let's start focusing on the individual components, starting with registration.